Welcome back at easysommelier.com. Today we talk about the most sold worldwide sparkling wine, which is Prosecco. Some of you may think that the most sold worldwide sparkling wine is Champagne, but this is not true. You have to consider that the number of bottles sold of Prosecco is about 600 million every year, and for Champagne we got about 400 million. So uh, Prosecco overcame uh, Champagne in the number of bottles sold in the year 2013. When we talk about Prosecco, we have to consider a, a sort of pyramid. At the base of the pyramid, there are two regions, Veneto and Friuli, in which you can make Prosecco. Then you go up and you have Prosecco DLC Treviso, which means that the grape must come and the wine must be, must be bottled in the area of Treviso. Then we go up and we go to the Prosecco Conegliano Valdobbiadene Superiore DOCG, which is the top of the quality. And this is a very small area, only 15 municipalities. And we talk about 90 million of bottles uh, out of the 600 million of bottles produced. Then at the top of the pyramid, you have the Cartizze, which is only 106 hectares. And uh, the wine is a little bit sweeter, it's about 22 grams of sugar per liter. The grape is Glera, which is a grape not really aromatic, and this is the reason why often the producers uh, uh, use a system which is called cryomaceration in order to extract the maximum number of flavor from the grape. Um, in order to conduct my testing today, I'm using the Prosecco of Azienda Vinicola Folador, for which I am their worldwide ambassador. Uh, the Azienda Vinicola Folador uh, is a company which is entirely owned by the same family from seven generations and has been founded 250 years ago. Today they produce 1.5 million of bottles and they sell in about 35 different countries. I am tasting the um, Prosecco which was manufactured uh, for the 250 years and so we're going to open the bottle. I'm sure that everybody is familiar with the fact that Prosecco is made with what we call the Charmat method, which is opposite to the Champenoise method, it means that the fermentation takes place in stainless steel container, while in the Champenoise method the fermentation takes place in the bottle. This is the reason why uh, the, the, the fermentation of uh, Prosecco is very short. But in the case of the Prosecco Flador, it goes up to six months. So it takes years to make a champagne, it takes a few months to make a Prosecco. So this does not mean that Prosecco is not a good wine and champagne is an outstanding wine. You can have very good Prosecco and very bad champagne. It's only the way in which it's made is completely different. So remember, Charmat method, and particularly for Prosecco Folador, a long Charmat method, up to six months. So we're going to open our bottle. We are not the Formula One Grand Prix, so we do not make any bumping. Color, very brilliant. The bubble is very persistent. And this is the result of this long fermentation on the east. The color is a pale lemon with uh, some uh, 
green reflects, so I would say more pale lemon green. The typical flavor of Prosecco, one above the others, which is the green apple. Peach, rose leaves. Bubble very persistent. Prosecco is a wine for, uh, I would say, a whole meal. But then you have to consider that you can have different level of sugar. You can go to zero dosage, to extra brut, to brut, so 600, 6 grams of sugar per liter, 12 grams of sugar, extra dry up to 17. So this means that you can have different occasion of consumption. If you have an extra brut, I would pair it basically with some simple fish, like a grilled sea bass. But if you're gonna go with the shellfish, with, um, for example, or lobsters, then an extra dry would be considered as the best pairing. And uh, in certain cases, also with some light dessert, the pairing will be good. Of course, as an aperitivo or for the full meal.